Connor, one of our glass blowers, has got really nice demonstration in the difference between so-called borosilicate glass, the sort of glass that's used for chemical apparatus, and quartz, which is silicon dioxide, which is used for very high temperature applications, like powerful street lights and things like that. And so what he did, it's very simple, is to take a piece of either quartz or borosilicate and heat it up in an oxygen gas torch, that's a torch with natural gas, methane, mixed with oxygen so it burns at a higher temperature, heat it up and then plunge it into a beaker of water, cold water. He started with heating borosilicate glass, which melts to make quite a large blob at the bottom. And then as that is dunked into the water... All right, Connor, show us the business, mate. Several things happen. First of all, of course, the water begins to boil, but there is a huge thermal gradient, difference in temperature between the glass that's outside the water and the red hot lump at the bottom. And this causes strains in the glass, so it cracks and a whole lump falls off. And that lump is still very hot on the inside, but is cooling on the outside. And this difference in temperature creates big strains because as things cool down, they contract. So the outside is trying to get smaller and the inside isn't contracting. And those strains give rise to cracks. And because the heat takes time to come out of the glass, those cracks spread through the glass relatively slowly, so you can watch them developing. And there are pings and so on as bits fly off. This is rather different from the so-called Prince Rupert's drop, when molten glass is poured into water and you get a piece of glass which looks okay until you break a little bit off and then it goes bang. What is important, if you're a glass blower like Connor, when you finish, you have to cool the glass slowly or you freeze all these strains into the glass and when somebody uses it, suddenly bang, it's gone.
some of you will have seen quartz as a natural mineral. You can get quite big crystals. Quartz has a very small coefficient of expansion. You can heat it to much higher temperature. As you heat it up, you can see that it starts glowing far more brightly than the borosilicate glass. And then when you plunge it into water, there's no strain so that, or relatively little. So there's lots of bubbling and flushing about, but nothing cracked. Well, when you heat any material up, it tends to expand. This is why on hot days, railway lines start buckling and trains can't run. But the amount that different materials expand when you heat them can vary very substantially. Metals expand a lot. So the quartz expands less? It expands very much less and the strains that are generated are much less than the strains needed to break the material. In the borosilicate, there is a big contraction of the outside, which is being cooled by the water, whereas the inside is not contracting because it's still hot. But, it was, but the quartz was still interesting when it went in the water, wasn't it? What was interesting is that Connor heated what was effectively the open end of a quartz test tube. So when he plunged it into the water, the gas inside the test tube was very hot, the air. And as it cooled down, of course, the gas contracted as well. And it sucked up a whole lot of water, nearly half the volume of the tube. So as Connor took it out, the tube was full of water or half full of water. Unfortunately, the surface tension was not enough to hold all the water in the tube. So it started running out after a little while. Borosilicate glass contains quite a high content of sodium. So when Connor heats it, you can see a strong orange glow from the sodium that is essentially evaporating from the glass as it's being heated. It's the same color that you see in old fashioned street lights, which gives you this orange color. And this emission from sodium is very intense. So you don't need much sodium in the vapor to give you this color. Professor, watching this gives me the impression that quartz is a more robust material than borosilicate. Why isn't all glassware made of quartz? Quartz is much more difficult to, to manufacture. And so you can get quartz glassware, but it's much more expensive. And for most applications, you don't really need it. And because borosilicate is much easier to work, you can make much more intricate apparatus from borosilicate than you can from quartz. But if you have high temperature applications, particularly high power bulbs, the bulbs in the old projectors, the bulbs in street lights in xenon um, headlights in cars, these are made from quartz because with borosilicate they just would melt and were not strong enough. Really strong. Then suddenly and pieces of glass fly everywhere. It looks like out of the textbooks. I just can't believe that nature can make anything quite so beautiful.